Hey, I'm Emma Garlett, and today I'm at the Carol Up collection of children's artworks. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the collection being returned to Western Australia. In this episode, I'll take you through the history of Carol Up, the importance of the artworks, and speak to descendants of those who painted the artworks. Carol Up was uh, a mission that uh, Aboriginal people were moved to um, and pushed out of Katanning and the surrounding areas. And it was one of the missions that, through the 1905 Act, that was basically uh, places, decide, uh, places determined to put the natives on so that they weren't in and around towns after that. Carol Up then um, started a school for the children that were put there and the parents were removed from the kids and the kids stayed Carol Up in order to actually stay at the school. And the Carol Up name itself derived from the Noongar word called Kwabala. Kwabala means place of plenty. Like a lot of the Noongar words, they were, they were changed because the white people didn't know how to talk or say the language. In the mid-1940s, um, so Mr Noel White and his family moved there and he was a teacher that had a really interesting background, in fact. Um, and he arrived at that place and I think it's almost as if what he saw was a lot of really unhappy children. If you look at some of the photos of the, of the class, you see an earlier photo of the class of the, of the children in the school and it's a really miserable black and white photo. And then you see a later photo afterwards, after Mr White's been there for a while, and you see children smiling in that picture. And it's quite clear, clear that there's been some sort of difference. You know, something's happened to impact upon them. And we can see now that what that was is probably uh, the nature of Mr White, Noel White, introducing those children to art. The kids from Carolup at that time was originally taught by a lady called Bella Colbon, now known as Bella Kelly, the Bella Kelly the artist. So she was the one that initiated a lot of that art, along with a, a Kicket lady married into the Kicket family. Somewhere in the early 1950s, um, a lady by the name of Florence Cutter actually came across their works. Uh, she saw their works in a, a woman's magazine, actually, and she was that um, curious about the nature of it that she actually went down to see these kids and see what they did and discovered that actually these young people had done these amazing artworks. Yeah. So she collected a series of them, took them to London with the, the aim to have uh, an exhibition. Florence Cutter fell into some hard times uh, not too long after that and as a result of that she ended up selling the collection of artworks that she'd bought of the children to Herbert Mayer who was in the States and when he, when he died his whole art collection got donated to the Colgate University in the state of New York. It's actually this box of artworks that just had Australian children's art written on the side of it that was discovered in 2004 and when they opened it up and had a look inside it they went, oh, wow, would you look at this? And that's when the journey started. And then that's when the crew behind the, the, at the University of uh, Colgate, uh, Colgate University president and, and crew got behind it and actually worked towards returning it back here. I do have a very profound connection uh, via my mother and also uh, my auntie and my uncles. Uh, all five children were taken to Carolop and works from the children indicate and show that my mother painted from around the age of five and a half and my uncle John, uh, his works I've only been recently introduced to and that was very kind from the Burnt Museum. Today my connection is because my wife was in there for 17 years when it's Marybank and I'm the business development officer for the Marybank Aboriginal Corporation and um, my wife is a chairperson, so she was in there for 17 years. But I always say to my group, Carol Up and Marybank are one. We cannot separate the two of them. There's a history, both of them have a shared history. My connection with Carol Up artwork is because of my Uncle Clippy, Ryder. I think he did about three artworks on display at the moment. I've never ever got to meet him because he never, he probably passed on when I was in the mission, see, so I should have asked my father a long time before he passed on why he never mentioned his, his, his secret brother. 
even as a, a, a body and Joey man who hasn't got family ties to these stories of these young people and people necessarily who were put into the Carolup uh, Native uh, Reserve, reminds me of the things that happened to my mum because my mother was taken in the 40s as part of the stolen generation in the Kimberley as well. And when you see pictures of children gathered together like that and you see how sad they are, you know, it's not hard to draw a line uh, from that to the nature of what's happened to your own mum. And I remember pictures of seeing my mum as a child. My mum was never happy where she was and kept. Um, but it's remarkable, actually it's amazing, you know, that these bits of paper with chalk on them, that form is amazing works of art now, can remind us actually to still stand strong in our stories. So how does it, that make you feel, seeing all the artwork there? Oh, look, when I see that artwork, I can see Uncle Reynold in the streets of Collie painting. <laughs> His painting was awesome. He had that unique style of painting and, and everybody used to, people, tourists would come from everywhere just to buy his art. So I was aware that I had family work in the collection, but access being a problem, and it was ex exceedingly overwhelming to see my uncle's work, because it also gives me hope that within our unknown works, one may be attributed to him. And hopefully after this, and from now until I think the end of July, the families can come in, so they can be proud of their father, of, what, of their work, and family, and their uh, siblings and cousins. I would ask that the community come with a very open mind. This is a gentle entry place into understanding the impact of colonial settlement on Aboriginal people in Western Australia. To have these works from young children who were young slaves, if we call it the truth. The fact that they were introduced to an art form, and that art form completely showed their connection to country, and the fact that it gave them hope in circumstances that were entirely undesirable for any child from anywhere to live in. And yet, they demonstrate to us that our children, they have resilience. My role with the Carolup Truth Telling Centre is to be the community um, engagement coordinator. And it's to help people, well, our mob mostly, to help our mob discover the stories that they might not know about in and around the Carolup uh, art collection, the Carolup story. One of the other parts of my role is to hopefully be able to find other descendants of uh, the child artists and other young fellows that pass through that place at that time as well. It's very important to understand that a lot of the works that we hold are still unknown artists. So if anyone in the community has a connection to Carolup or in fact to Marybank, which is what Carol Up was called after it was closed. Do come forward, speak to us, come and see me. Let's have a cup of tea. Let's find out if you have story and connection because every time we add a connection, we bring in more family and that is very important because the artwork has the power to reconnect fractured families. And we should be commemorating the lives of those young people and the fact that they never got to see much else happened to that. What we do is we celebrate this exhibition in the way that it should be. This exhibition should be a state level and a national level in our exhibition. It's that important a story. Whatever it is that gets passed over to us, you hold onto it tightly and you make of it whatever it is you can. But also celebrating the fact that we can sit in their memories now and still be here we are today. Thanks for joining me this week on Painted Black. I'm Emma Garlett. Have a good one.